Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna to be talking about a specific impedance matching method, and that is quarter wavelength impedance matching. So we've gotten a lot of questions from viewers, and some of those questions have centered around RF design, and specifically around impedance matching. So quarter wavelength impedance matching is one simple way to match impedance at a specific frequency that gives you a really high Q value. So what I'm gonna do in this video is run over what is a quarter wavelength transmission line, how to use it for impedance matching, and exactly when you should use it for impedance matching. Let's get started. So first things first, let's just quickly review what is impedance matching. So the idea of, of impedance matching is pretty simple and I'll just use a transmission line that's being used as a feed line into a component as an example. So let's just suppose, for example, I have a 50 ohm transmission line and I have a load component, let's say Z sub load, that is not equal to 50 ohms. So it's just some other impedance. I need to put something here such that the input impedance, Z sub in, looks like 50 ohms. And I use 50 ohms here because that is the value that matches this feed line right here. So the idea here is that it sets the reflection coefficient gamma to be equal to zero. So that's a really simple way to think of impedance matching. Now you could of course use a circuit here. One option is LC matching. So we have a inductor and a capacitor that are arranged for uh, into a matching circuit, and they can either be in high pass or low pass configuration. The other way that you can do it is with a stub coming off in parallel, or what you can do is you can use a quarter wavelength impedance transformer. Now, a quarter wavelength impedance transformer essentially just takes this circuit, whatever it is, and then replaces it with a transmission line that is matched to a quarter of the wavelength of whatever the signal is on this line. So let's just suppose for a moment that we're operating with just a conductor in air near some ground plane. So if my DK value is one, frequency here is, let's say, 300 megahertz. My wavelength is three times 10 to the eighth divided by three times 10 to the eighth equals one meter. So in this really simple hypothetical example, my length of my quarter wavelength impedance transformer would then be 0.25 meters. So when you're designing a quarter wavelength section of transmission line to match impedances, what you're doing is you're trying to figure out the width of that line so that you get a specific impedance of the line with this length and it sets the input impedance to 50 ohms or whatever the transmission line impedance is and then gives you a zero reflection coefficient looking into this circuit. So first, let's look at the properties of a quarter wavelength transmission line. So if this is my input impedance looking into a transmission line and I have a known load impedance, Z sub L, what does Z sub zero, the characteristic impedance of this section of my transmission line with a length L equal to lambda over four need to be? So we wanna figure out what this needs to be in order to hit a target Z sub in given a Z sub L value. So to do this, we have to go back to the input impedance equation from transmission line theory. So the input impedance equation from transmission line theory is just Z sub in equals Z sub zero multiplied by a fraction. So this equation accounts for a lossy transmission line. And generally when you start to see derivations of the, uh, of the impedance needed for a quarter wavelength transformer, they tend to ignore the losses. Now, if you're operating at lower frequencies, maybe you're in the gigahertz range, let's say at the lower end of the gigahertz range, at lambda over four, your losses may not be extreme. So that's something that you have to weigh when you're actually doing this calculation. Now, in reality, in your PCB, your dielectric will have losses 
and your copper will have losses. And so we've discussed those things in other videos. What's going to happen here is if you plug this into gamma, and remember gamma has some attenuation plus some propagation constant, what's going to happen is that tangent or hyperbolic tangent of this number is actually going to give you a complex number. So what that means is that your transmission line that you'll then have to design will have to have a complex component to it. That's actually not very easy to do on a PCB. On a PCB, the complex component of a transmission line that you design on a practical PCB is actually gonna be very small. So you have to keep that in mind. Generally, when you're designing these quarter wavelength transformers on a PCB, the reason we tend to ignore the losses or we ignore the alpha part of the propagation constant is because your transmission line impedance is going to be very close to being a purely real number. So there will be no complex component. So if we just follow this along and we ignore the losses for just a moment, then this equation essentially transforms into beta L with a tangent and then same here, beta L with a tangent and then we have an I here and an I here. So next, recognizing that beta is just equal to two pi divided by lambda. If we multiply these guys together, we get pi over two. Anyone who knows what tangent of pi over two is, it approaches infinity. And so this reduces to Z in equals Z sub zero squared over Z sub L. And that's how we get to this important result. So from here, you just solve for z sub zero, you actually find that it is the square root of zn times zl. So this should illustrate the reasoning for ignoring the losses, because the reason you would want to ignore the losses here in this equation is, first of all, it just simplifies the calculation and it gives you a purely real number for the characteristic impedance, and you can actually design the characteristic impedance to some target value using your PCB design tools like Altium Designer. Other PCB design calculators, they will actually give you only a real impedance. So you get a pretty good approximation for what the impedance and thus the width of this transmission line will need to be in order to get very good matching to Z sub in your target input impedance value. So now, what do we do if our load impedance is actually complex? So this is important because if we have something like an antenna, antennas usually do have some complex component to their impedance. And if we wanna then use a quarter wavelength transformer to then match to that complex impedance, what you will find is that this also has to be complex and you actually won't be able to do it very easily on a PCB because for the reasons I mentioned before, your losses and your dispersion is just not gonna be big enough in order to create a impedance transformer that has a large enough complex component to then solve this equation. So remember, if this is a complex number and this is a real number, let's say we're matching the 50 ohms, once we take that square root, we're gonna get another complex number. And that complex number is gonna be very hard to design to by just plugging in a width for your transmission line that gives you a purely real valued impedance. So what do we do? Well, we have to put another section of transmission line that can then match this to a real input impedance on this side. And that additional section of transmission line is actually not a quarter wavelength transformer. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. So in this case, what we would have is a first section of transmission line, and we need to figure out what its impedance is going to be. And then we have this length of this first section of transmission line L that could be some value, actually not a quarter wavelength, maybe not a half wavelength. We don't exactly know, but it's gonna be something that is greater than zero. Then we'll have a second section of transmission line with its own characteristic impedance. And this second section of transmission line can then be our quarter wavelength match. And we'll have an L1 here, and we'll have an L2 here. And then the input impedance looking into this section, Z sub in, will then be given by the reflection between Z02, and then this input impedance, Z in, we'll just call it Z in one. In doing this type of design, 
And in setting this length to lambda over four, what you actually need to do is design this such that this length gives you an input impedance for this first section with an imaginary part, so I've used the imaginary operator here, equal to zero. So you want this input impedance to be purely real. So this is one of the reasons why on an RF PCB that uses these quarter wavelength and half wavelength and other you know, fractional wavelength transmission line matching sections, it'll actually look something like this when you kind of draw out the trace lengths. You may have a thin trace length, and then you may have a thick trace length, and then you may have another kind of odd shaped trace length, and then you get to your actual emitter or your component. So this may be like an IC right here. But sometimes you'll actually see this arrangement used in RF PCBs. This is especially the case when this is being used as like a feed line for let's say like a coupler or an antenna as I mentioned earlier. And the reason for that is because these elements in that circuit board may actually have complex impedance and they're not purely real. Now, of course, in doing this problem, you could also set this to a defined value and then leave this section as your unknown. That's another way to, to solve this problem. And then set this to a target of, let's say, 50 ohms. So just for fun, what I'm gonna do is invite you to actually solve a problem here and then post your answer in the chat. And I'll do the problem too, and we'll see if we can all get the right answer. And whoever gets the right answer, we'll go ahead and send you out a t-shirt. All you gotta do is message me on LinkedIn, give me your shipping info, and I'll send you out an Altium t-shirt. So let's just say for this load, we have an impedance of 25 minus seven I. So this is gonna be our load impedance. And then we're gonna use a 50 ohm section here for our initial impedance matching section. So your job is first to figure out what the length is that gives you a real impedance here and then use this value and our target value of 50 ohms to figure out what the impedance of this section here, our quarter wavelength section needs to be in order to give us this impedance matching to 50 ohms at this port. So like I said, post your answer in the chat and let's see who can get the right answer and we'll send you a t-shirt. All right, thanks everybody for watching this. I know we've gotten some RF questions in the past and we'll keep going with some of this stuff because I think it is really interesting and of course, so many more PCBs are integrating RF functionality, and I think it is important for designers to at least know some of the basics on things like impedance matching and impedance matching circuits. All right, everybody, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. You can follow along with all of our updates, leave your comments and questions and your answers to the challenge in the comment section. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, everybody.